Welcome to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us. Today on Station Rigs, we're in the Borough of Lebanon. We're doing the Lebanon Fire Company in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. Before we do, hit that subscribe. Let's go see what they have. Main Street Drift. Two corners. One up into the uh, grass of the Lebanon Hotel. One into the telephone pole. Everything's fine with the telephone pole. And uh, I have one female with knee pain. No entrapment. So today we're going to meet up with one of their firefighters, Jason. He invited us out a while ago, and we finally have an opportunity to talk to him about this Squad 18. Hey, Jason. Hey, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Welcome to Lebanon. All right. Thank you for bringing us out. Of course. So absolutely beautiful sea grave, right? Yes, sir. All right. I love the all complete red. So before we get started, though, can you tell our viewers who you are, sure. your credentials, that kind of stuff? Sure. My name is Jason Strauss. I'm a firefighter here for Lebanon Borough Fire Company. I've been a fireman now for five years. Okay. So. All right. Now, just to let you know, mm -hmm. we did park this a specific way so we can get all the way around it and open the door. They normally don't park like this in their engine bay. <laughs> but uh, can we see what's going on inside? Of course. So this is our 2006 Seagrave. It's got um, 1,500 GPM, 500 gallons of water on board. Okay. So you mind if I sit in it? Of course. Go ahead. All right. I always like getting behind the steering wheel of a nice truck. <laughs> all right. Talk me through what we have here. So right. <clears throat> right up here, this is your uh, driver's compartment. Um, right, right in the middle, you have our CO meter, and then you got two portable radios. One's for the driver, one's for the officer. Okay. Right on the top of the doghouse, you got map books, your ERGs, binoculars, a couple of uh, fire wipes. Yeah. All okay. that good stuff. Safety vest. Yes, sir. And here, I assume, is going to be one of your masks. Yep. Okay. It'll be one so of your masks. engineer can also go into fire. He's actually certified to go in. He's not just a pump operator. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And this is a, looks like an Allison transmission with yep. push button. Yes, sir. All right. And then down below here, you have a couple of different buttons. It we looks... do. We got you got the air horn, and then you got the Q siren right from here. Okay. This is very roomy too. Yeah. You know the fact that uh, the steering wheel is almost upright. You, and I'm sure it tilts down to where you need it, mm -hmm. but I can get in here and with all my bunker gear. My boots will fit in here nice and big. You know, so very comfortable. Yeah, it's very it's very comfy. See. Okay, and in the middle here is where your lights and sirens go, yep. right? Yep, so that red switch right there, that's the master yep. for all the lights. And then you have, um, we have our PA100 in the middle for the sirens. You got our aero stick controls, and then you have your regu regular uh, Pioneer radio. Okay. Do you use 800 megahertz, 500 megahertz? Do you know what radios you use? I think um, for us, we're still, we're 400s. We're in the 400 okay. range, so we're ultra high band. Are you, con are you connected to the county or are you independent? We are connected to Huron County Communications. Okay, okay. And last but not least, this is an air brake, brake truck. Yes. So the question becomes, with an air brake truck like this, do you have to have a CDL in order to become an operator for your company? So in the state of New Jersey, you do not have to have a CDL to operate fire apparatus. Although, if you're going, if some of our departments are on the Delaware River, if you're going in the PA, those drivers for those New Jersey companies have to have the CDO. Okay, okay. All right, let's keep working our way around then here. Sure. <clears throat> let's take a look in the back. Okay. So this truck is an eight-man cab. We can put, you have two in the front. You can do six back here. Okay. Four pack seats, nice. two jump seats. Okay. We have all of our hand light accessories here. Up above in the middle here on this side and this side are four uh, traffic vests because we do cover the interstate out on the highway. Right. So we have those for all, all the guys on the trucks. Um, we have our hand lights, which are six of. Um, there's two extras up front. Okay. And um, under here, it's a pretty convenient space. This is our high rise pack right in here. Okay. So we have 100 feet of inch and three in the high rise pack with a um, with a two and a half to inch and three adapter for right. standpipes. Right. And then all right here is all of our search rope, our personal utility rope. Okay. For any, for doing any searches. I think searches this is the first buildings. time I've actually seen a high rise pack to the inside compartment. Mm. Normally they put them on an outside yep. compartment. But utilizing all the space is very mm -hmm. important. 
What's underneath the, this here? Is so, this maintenance? Or? Yeah, this is more of a little maintenance hatch right here. Just okay. where the battery you get is. Your batteries yep. and stuff like this. So is this a cab flip forward to do maintenance? Yes. It's, yep. The cab leans forward. Do all your maintenance on that. Right, right. So. It looks like you're running Scott bottles. Yep, Scott. We have 45 minute bottles. So the biggest debate is going to be, do you call it a bottle? Do you call it a cylinder? I call it a cylinder. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so some people, like, on my show, I've done both. So mm -hmm. it kind of depends where I'm at. So I'm getting used to both. Things. Gotcha. So, all right, working our way back here. So let's move to the pump. So this is our panel. It's a 1500 GPM waterless panel right here okay. for the um, for the operator. He has his own radio. Okay. So he can hear the guys inside. Right. Um, you got your five inch taken right here for all your LDH. Then you have um, two inch and three quarter discharges and then you have the uh, two and a half intake right down here okay and then this is your inch your inch inch and a half forestry line okay so in what year did you say this was 2006 dude it looks brand new I know. look how yeah. shiny this chrome is and hopefully you guys can see that on video this thing is immaculate you know i would not know that this was that old <laughs> so let's start low okay and here this is a drawer we have our step chalks right for motor vehicle accidents we have our little tire valves to get the air out. We have wedges. We have four step chocks on the squad for, to stay, for stabilization of a motor vehicle during a motor vehicle accident. Okay. So you're running this not just on fire calls, you're running it on EMS calls then too for fire act, for accidents. Correct. Okay, that's Correct. why it's called a squad, not an engine. Because just stepping back and looking at it, it looks like a regular engine. Yeah. But you guys call it a squad. We do, yeah. Okay. It can both do rescue and fire. Okay, so okay. We have both that capability. This is the operator's compartment. Each each truck has it set up the same. So we have your low level strainer for um, drafting. You have your um, gated your gated valves for your hydrants. You have your different fittings, um, double males, double female connections for hoses, and then you have your hydrant assist down here. Right. A couple more strainers, and then you have the operator's cylinder right here. Right, because he doesn't have one in his seat. Correct. Okay. And then. Um, Love the fact that you label everything, and these are mounted in here. They're not just thrown into a yep. cabinet. Yeah, they're all, everything, everything is mounted. So this is mounted, <laughs> all this is mounted, the spanners, everything. That's a good way place. to keep it organized, keep it clean. Mm -hmm. And if you're missing something, maybe you left a scene early at night. Yeah. You know, we get done with calls at all hours in the morning and day and all kinds of stuff. I tend to maybe leave one of those behind. You'll know it right away yeah, when you get yeah, back you'll to the station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, on top of that, this is the um, control. Right here is a control for the light tower that we have oh, on the top. Wow. We okay. have a light tower. Right. It's right up above the cab there. Okay. So that you can control it from here. You're able to step back a, approximately 10 feet from the apparatus to see where you can put it. Right. So. Okay. So it's almost its own light system too. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily call in an air light. You can yep. actually light up the scene right away. So in here is our extra cylinder storage. Yep. So we have two two bottles here and then only one on this side okay because you have your fuel for here right and then what's unique down here we have a hitch because we have a portable winch on this truck okay yeah kind of hide away there nice mm -hmm. and clean so in here as i discussed you have your portable winch this is our airbags okay for any lifting anything we need to do with airbag we have that we have an air air hammer we have our throw lines because we, we do also um, water, some okay. water rescues. So in addition to the air hammer, we also have the rabbit tools for forcible entry. Right, right. And what's a rabbit tool? So those that may not know, they haven't so, seen the show or whatever. So basically a rabbit tool is, um, it's another way to gain access into a door. What you'd basically do is that it's got two little tips on the side here, you'd put into a jam of the door and then you have a little air line that would go to either a foot pedal or an air pump. Okay. And when you pump that, the air, will push that tooth forward right. and basically breach that so door. So the ears door. of the rabbit pull it apart. Correct. Okay. Yep. So what this is, this is um, a slide master tip down. So basically what you would do is actually slide out. Okay. And then it'll tip down just like that. Oh, I love the fact that you have the wood in there and it's mounted too. I thought this the whole thing was just gonna slide yeah. up on top of you. Yeah, and then we so. have our hitch extensions here. We have our uh, operator for the hitch right here, and then your battery plugins right. are right here. A couple. Did pulleys. you guys make these, or did they come from factory? This um, these were these were um, house made. The wood, all the all the shelves you see were factory, but right. the, just the wood is kind of something we kept going on. With. That's a fantastic idea. Many times we worry about how we're going to secure gear in yeah. a fire truck, 
and having a wood cut out like this is very secure. You know, just bringing that thing down, I wasn't worried at all that it was going to fall on. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. And that's kind of a testament to, you know, firemen in general that we're kind of the jacks of all trade. We can do woodworking, we yeah. do welding, we mm -hmm. do all different kinds of stuff. And having a crew member that's able to do that is pretty cool. Yeah. So in here, again, are all of our airbags. So all of our airbags are in here. Okay. So they're and in the And these are the drawer. kind of things that you would help put underneath the car, right? Yep. So this would go underneath and then it blows the... Yep. And so then you, you inflate lift. the air into it. Yep. Okay. And all different kind of sizes. So in here is kind of the um, the toolbox of the truck. We have a custom snap-on toolbox wow. put in here. Okay. Um, this is pretty much where all of our battery tools are. We have battery recharging stations here. Yep. We have uh, two of them, reserve batteries. Um, Dewalt um, air, a little blower there. We have your battery electric grinders, circular grinders. Okay. You have your saws on here. Yeah. And then up here is our bandsaw. Okay. And it looks behind you got a uh, torch. Yep. We have our cutting torch on here, and then we also have our um, profile pack. Okay. I love the fact that it's a snap-on toolbox. Yep. This is what I would want in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also DeWalt. I've noticed a lot of the fire trucks nowadays are moving over to Milwaukee, mm -hmm. but the, the DeWalt are tried and true. You know, we use them on our stretchers. We use striker stretchers, mm -hmm. and we use the DeWalt battery system on them. So. You know, it's definitely a tried and true kind of Yeah, system. we're pretty much a half and half, so we got some Milwaukee, some DeWalt. So. Right, right. But Do you mind if I open a drawer and see how this is? So, start from the bottom. We got extra flares, caution tape. Okay. Some sockets here. Um, we have a come, come along here. And just a couple more. Um, so my curiosity is going to be all your wrenches and sockets. Are they all mm -hmm. just jumbled together or are oh, they secured in there too? They're, they're secured too. So we'll, in the few drawers up, we'll get to that. So this is uh, all of our... Our drills here. You have your different bits in here. We have two of these. Right. So it's got all of our bits. Okay. So and then here's our wrench sets, as you were asking. Okay. All sorted. Yeah, it's got the nice foam lay in already. Yep. That's a good way to do that. I need to do that for my own garage. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is our all of our sockets. Right. Oh, then they're already in the cases. Yep. We yep. got a few here. And then the majority of them are all okay. in this case here. Well, the other advantage of doing it this way is you can pull this out and bring it to the scene. Yep. Rather than running back and forth and back exactly, and forth, yep. you can just bring this whole case to the scene. Yep. You got this this little go case here, or you can just bring this one if it's going to be a prolonged operation. For slack. Yep. As you Good go on, thinking. You have our pliers and stuff. Yep. Different size plier, vice grips. You know, we pretty much load this toolbox so up. So A toolbox like this is designed to get into places like mm -hmm. you know houses and and corporate buildings that may be locked and we need to get in there to put a fire mm -hmm. out but it's also designed to pretty much take a car apart yep because there's many times where you can't get open a door correct yeah. you, you know you break a window and you still can't get to that patient you got to somehow figure out a way to unbolt things cut yep. things apart yep. you know all too often we think of jaws of life we mm -hmm. just pry on it and pull it apart yeah but if you have the hand tools to do it it mm -hmm. doesn't take that much longer to you know take the car apart yep. rather than then cut it all apart. Yeah, I used the sockets the other day at, um, at a hazmat call, a, 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 ta a uh, diesel tank on the truck ruptured. Yeah. So we had to get to it, but the only way was to take the cover off the side. So we had the socket set, bring it over, take that off so we didn't have to cut anything. Perfect. And then this is mostly all of our MBA stuff. So we have a, a lockout kit yep. if needed, our triage tags. We have extra blades okay. for our sawzalls. Sawzalls, yeah. And then we have, um, we have one of our extension uh, cameras. So this is actually a camera. So for more, more of confined space, say if someone's trapped under a car or like a piece of rubble, you just put the camera down, you can kind of see. All right, show the, show the viewers On the there. end right here. So this, this with the light and the camera would go right. under somewhere. Can you see me? Yep. <laughs> so, but That's yep. Pretty slick. Yeah, so if they're trapped under the vehicle, like you said, or even inside mm -hmm. of a vehicle, maybe you got a van. Or inside of a house. So. Yeah, house or anything mm -hmm. like that. That's a pretty cool tool to have, yep. too. Not many uh, fire trucks have that. Yeah. So. And then right in here, we have two hydrant bags, different sizes. Okay. Reason being, this lever right here is a speedy dry hopper. Okay. There's a hopper that runs up the back of the truck, so we could just fill it with speedy dry. So we just fill, put one of the bags under the truck, okay. fill it with speedy dry, off you go. Perfect. <laughs> All right, working our way around to the back here. So, in, in here, this is where all of our extrication equipment is. All right. 
Yeah. We run TNT okay. uh, rescue tools. So this is considered the Jaws of Life train, right? Yep, this is this is pretty much your Jaws of Life right here. So as the lay person who knows about that or they seen it on television, that's what we're talking about. Yep. Those, those are your spreaders. Yep, the, these are your spreaders. You have your cutters right there. We got um, we have two rams here to yep. do dash rolls, yep. any lifts, and then we have your steering wheel seatbelt cutter, pedal cutter right here. Right, right. Good setup, easy mm -hmm. to use, and easy to deploy. Yeah, it's it's great. And again, it's mounted in there so that it's not going anywhere, yep. you know, driving down the road. Because you driving up here, I had some twists and turns. Yep, there's a lot of turns. Yep. <laughs> so in here. We have extra line for the hydraulic tools. Okay. We have a backboard. We have uh, four different hooks. Yep. And we have a lot of uh, different stabilization wood in here. Okay. For could be used for cribbing or like a, a quick shoring. We have two pry bars right here, and then we have two hard sleeve suctions. Yep. And this is pretty so interesting. The suctions would go for your drafting. Yes. The hooks are to pull down drywall, right? Yep. Drywall, okay. ceiling, anything. And then what's interesting is we, since we do RIT fast, this is our RIT fast truck. Okay. A lot of our things are already on this, um, this Stokes right here. Right. Okay. So we'll have, um, it's got wheels on it. Yep. All right. This gentleman are going to help us out here, bring this out. Yep. So a majority of our RIT and fast equipment are already on the Stokes itself. Yeah, so it's we have loaded, ready to go. So we have your rope, your rip pack, all your webbing, anything you need. A lot of it's just all your search rope and your utility rope. Okay. So and a rip pack is what? A rip pack basically is if there's a downed firefighter and for a, rip, a fast team basically they're going in to go get that downed firefighter. If he is either unconscious or low on air, this rip pack, you would take out you would take out the mask here. Yeah. You would clip it in on, on this on this side. You'd pull it out and then you would perform what's called a mask swap. Okay. So basically while one guy is pulling their SCBA mask off, another is putting this mask on. Okay. No purge valve right. because the air is just gonna be constantly flowing to them. Because so it's positive pressure flow. Yes. Okay. Can you buddy breathe with this then also? You can, the, we do have the connections. We do have the connections for this in the in the rip pack. We have universal connections. Okay. Everyone's switching over to those. Yeah. So it's got the buddy breather. It can fill the other pack up too, their pack if needed. So okay. it'll kind of level out the air. So it doesn't matter if they're using MSA, they're using uh, Scott or uh, what's the other one with the D? Daimler? I yeah, forget. Sounds right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're able to help them. Yes because we have those universal fittings. Okay. So That's awesome. Yep. And then so what's- I love the fact that it's got wheels on it too. Yeah, you what's- see a lot of these Stokes packs that, they, that don't actually have wheels and you gotta carry them around. Yeah, what's great about the wheels is if you wanna, if you wanna show, you can, um, you can single personally lift this up and wheel it around. So okay. say, um, or say Firefighter Gruber here was, had to bring this up to scene or away, he can do this himself because not right. everyone has to pick it up so it can just wheel around. Right. Now I'm going to give you just a little insight here. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you're going to need to look into is the fast boards from yep. Fast Rescue Solutions. We're working on getting one. Dude, they're awesome. We just recently did a review of them. Mm -hmm. If you need a contact, let me know. I will. We'll, we'll try to get you one. I will. So, Thank you. But yeah, this is a great setup. Yep. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good board. It's a two piece board. So if you got to break it apart, then you kind of have your little orange, yep. your own fast board. And then what's great about the wheels is that if you just pull the pin right here, Oh, come right off. Those are off and then, you know, you're quick to go. All right, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's thinking. Yep. All right. So up top in this compartment here, you have your ladders. Okay. You have your attic, your folding attic ladder. You have a three section, you have a three section, section 24 ladder. foot, and then you have a single section um, ground ladder. Okay. You carry roof ladders on this? We or? do. Yep, yep. It's at a uh, 12 foot. That's 12, oh, 12 foot. foot. Yep, 12 okay. foot. And then, the, then you have the uh, three flat. So ladders. the difference between a roof ladder and attic ladder, mm -hmm. the attic ladder folds together. Yep. So you can get into smaller places. Yep. To get into the attic. Yeah, the little closet. The roof ladder has the hooks on it, right? Yes. Okay. Just they make got sure I got it right. Hose. Yep. <laughs> so um, then we have the hose bed. What are you guys running? How much up there? We have. I'll show you. We do um, everything on this truck is ran off the back. Okay, so you don't have any side lays or anything? It's all no, no, no cross lays. Okay. We do have one line off the front, 
which is a which is um a hundred feet of inch and three. Okay. So we have a hundred feet of inch and three here. We have 400 feet of inch and three. This is pretty much our courtyard lay. Yeah. So if we're going into those high rise buildings and we didn't take the high rise pack, you could still stretch that because you got 400 feet. Okay. Then you have your two and a half um, blitz, blitz line. Right. And then we carry a thousand feet of five inch. Okay. Okay. Now I noticed that it's color coordinated too from the yep. side compartment where we were looking at the pumps. Mm -hmm. Orange to orange, blue to blue. So yep. you know exactly what's going on. Yep. So it's much more easier for the operator because if they don't know what line they're pulling, but they see it, then right. they know they pretty much can know, kind of guess what they're doing. Right, right. So. In this drawer here, this is pretty much all of our struts. Okay. So we and what is a strut designed for? So they're designed for stabilization. They basically, um, what you would do is that you'd connect into the bases here, then you'd choose what kind of tip you're going to use to stabilize, say, a car. Okay, so if, if a car's on its side yes. or up on its roof. You use those blocks on the other side to initially stabilize it. Mm -hmm. This is, you want to make sure that sucker's not. Yep, perfect. these are for the long run. So okay. you got your pickets here. If you got a nail in the pickets, then you got that. You have your chains to hook it up to for that come along. Okay. So you're pretty much set up. So we carry two of those on the truck for your, like say your box trucks or your tractor trailers. Right. Right. So. Okay. This is pretty much. I like this symbol right here. That's yep. paramedic by trade. I like that symbol <laughs> on a truck. So this is pretty much, we have our saws down here. We run still here. Okay. Um, and, and the different saws, you have a K-12. Yep. Can we pull the drawer out? Sure. So circular saw or K-12. Yep. Whatever you guys call it here. You got a small chainsaw and a large chainsaw. Yes. Why the two different chainsaws? So um, for the larger one, so for this one, this is mostly for you would use for like, say you got like a tree in the way from a, for a building trying to make egress or trying to go in. Okay. You cut that tree down real quickly. You can use it for ventilation. Uh, it's lighter. And then this bigger one's more for your roof cuts. Roof cuts, yep. ventilation. Okay. The different bags are yep. more so cribbing, it looks like. In here, you got your cribbing blocks. And then here, you got wedges. It's a mix of both. So you'd grab two bags, both those bags. In here, you have your ratchet straps, yep. which we have a bunch of. In here is the hard protection for doing any vehicle extrication. So these in here are your plexiglass, which would go over the patient. Okay. So when they're cutting the windshield, it wouldn't sure. um, go right into the patient. Makes sense. And then you have your sharps protection bag. So what we did was we use old hose. Right. So if you had a piece of metal coming out of the car, like say this was a piece of metal after we cut, right. this basically would just slide so right you, over it. So you're thinking like you, maybe I cut the B post and I mm -hmm. cut that B post high. Yep. You're gonna slide that over there to yep. protect everybody from going around. Yeah, so the, basically it would just go right over the door. Right. And then it, so you wouldn't get any puncture rooms or anything. Okay. So, and then up here, Got your crash, your oxygen bag in here. Okay. Are um, you guys EMTs, first responders, paramedics? What do you guys run here on this? So uh, we don't have any EMTs on our department. Okay. Um, some had it and then, but then ended up getting lapsed. Okay. So um, we just basically, we know we have our basic uh, first aid. First aid, yep, first so responder. Yep, so we're all CPR certified here. So we carry the AEDs okay. and everything. Okay. Um, in addition, we have our um, response blanket. So this is pretty much your soft protection okay. for extrication. Yeah. So um, basically during the initial cuts, like when they're taking A, B, C post, throw that over them, then you'd have your rescuer behind them, pretty much talking with them, right. keeping patient contact. Okay. And then right behind these are your head blocks because so, you don't want their neck. Right. Them. So if you guys aren't EMTs mm -hmm. at this, and you're just first responders, who do you guys normally run with for your, at your, your EMS services? Then? So our EMS service is covered by South Branch Emergency Service. Okay. They have a, a rescue company and BLS. So they're basically, will be doing the cutting while we're basically stabilizing, just providing um, aid good, for them. Good so, collaboration. Yes. That's what it's all about. Yep. And up top is that, it's just a up smoke top, ejector? Yeah, we have, um, we have our fan here with extra cord, okay. battery powered, okay. which is great. It's lightweight. We have a shoulder strap for it. Right. So it's not like the old box ones where you need like two people right. to carry the thing. <laughs> so same setup as we did over here on the other side. You have your extra cylinders in here. This is brilliant by a lot of the fire companies, whether it's Seagrave or mm -hmm. Pierce or something like that, they are literally using every space available on a fire truck. Yeah. You know, the wheel wells and every, any place you can put something, we're gonna find a place yep. to put stuff. If someone wanted to join your company mm -hmm. and become part of the fire company, do they have to have all this knowledge to become or do you guys kind of teach them? We pretty much uh, teach them. They, there is classes available 
they can okay. they can attend in Hunter County. All the training is free. Okay. So they can um, they go to the academy. It's all free training. So and the instructors take time out of their own nice. you know, schedule nice. to help the guys. What if they do specifically want to come help you guys? How would they get a hold of you? Do you have so, a website? Do yeah, you have a of course. So Facebook page. Yep. So our website is www.18fire.org. If you go on there. You can pretty much see what we do, how to reach us, where we're located, and also every Monday nights, um, every Monday nights around seven o'clock, we're always down here. Okay. There's always someone down here. Awesome. So you can come down, you can dr drill with us, see the trucks, help clean. Okay. Yeah. All right. And here, this is pretty much for the um, those two jump seats. These are their packs. Okay. Um, this this middle can slide out here, right. so it's more easier to get to. Okay. We have your water can here, and there's a spare cylinder for the SUVA in the back. Gotcha. And then you have your ABC with another spare cylinder right. in the back, and then you have your lockout tag out kit right, right on this side. I also just noticed up here, these things are so shiny. It's like a mirror up here. Yeah. So if you don't know what's in there, you can look up and you can see what's back there. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty slick. Yeah. Down here, pretty much our tow chains. We have extra hydraulic hose here. Um, all your tow hooks are pretty much down here for, for any wire down calls. You have your electricals, okay. your tape here. Now you're not towing vehicles out mm -hmm. of the way. Are, you're not like a tow truck. No, it's more It's more of a, um, it, it can be into a stabilizing aspect for the Paratex, okay. for the struts there to hook to the car and then you'd pick it in the chain or use that chain come along. Okay. So, and here's pretty much, pretty much the toy chest. Whatever ah, you need is in here. Right, right. So we have three slide outs, all jammed with tools on each side. Right. You got the junkyard dogs. Yep, I've have, seen those before. We have two long junkyards and then two short ones. Yeah, Dickinson City used those. Mm -hmm. So, and then you got all your glass masters, your different pipe poles, bottle jacks. This is the first time I've seen this kind of jack on a truck. Yeah, so we recently just put that on here. Why did you go with that? So um, we were, there was recently there was a call a few years ago where we were asked if we had one of these to move a car to access a patient. Okay. But no one had one, so they used the chain come along. So then we thought, let's put that on the truck. Let's incorporate it's a it. Good idea. Yep. You know. So we threw we threw this on, used it a couple times. And um, these are all slide outs too. And then we have your basic elevator key set okay. here. Because yep. we do have elevators in the borough. Right. Yeah. I like the fact that you have a floor jack in there. That's something yeah. that, that's something new. Yeah. All right. So over here. Over here is your officer side for your pump panel. You have your um your hydrant your hydrant assist here, and then you have a little pony line down here. Okay. Um you got your two intakes on the side. And then you have your five inch discharge here. And then you also have another two and a half discharge, which is down to an inch and three. Gotcha. If needed. And then up top, it looks like you have some kind of deck gun. Yep. So that's a Akron high rise deck gun okay. with a stack tip on it. Um, also up top, we have a little hazmat bucket. And then um, we have that throw ring right there. Um, in the coffin compartments on this side, there's just a easier access to get to the ladders if needed. Okay. On the other side is mostly all of our hazmat stuff, our um, PFDs or for um, any water related incident. Okay. And then a lot of just a lot of hazmat booms, pigs and stuff. The one thing I haven't seen yet, do you carry foam on this since it is a squad? Yeah, or? we do. The foam, the foam is in the little barrels, which are up top above here. Okay. And then we have the foam pack on the other side, the foam and the Yeah, the I foam saw that, but I didn't see where you were storing the foam. Yeah, okay. so, and then we have a junction box on this side. Right. As long as one on the other. And this just goes on the other side. So yep. we've, we've already seen back there, Yep. right? And then just again, right here, just all your utility rope and stuff. And then your little maintenance Okay. right here. And then we get all the way up to the officer seat. Yep. And then right in the front, we have our, your Knox box right under the okay. officer seat. What's a Knox box? So basically a Knox box is, um, you'll see them outside a lot of buildings. You'll see there are little wall mounted safes. Okay. Inside of them are, contain extra spare set of keys to get into a business or such. Okay. So um, the one key is for the box itself. This one will unlock the box. So we have the code to it. It's all computerized. So whoever puts their pin in to take the key out, it will track who, who has, who has, who has that key, key, how long, okay. and then when it gets put back in, it'll say when that time ended. 
That's very slick. Yep. The other thing that's nice about that is all too often we'll show up to a residence, maybe an extended care facility, nursing home or something like that, mm -hmm. and the doors are locked. Yeah. You know, it's after hours, so visiting hours isn't there, mm -hmm. and we have to knock on the door or, we'll, yeah. you know, pick up the phone and call yep. somebody or wait for the maintenance guy to come. Mm -hmm. Having this available to go, you don't have, you skip all that process. Exactly. Yep. Um, we, we just access right in so we don't have to take a door. Right. So. All right. I like taking doors though, don't get me wrong. <laughs> so right. up front we also have the iPad for the officer which has our iron responding onto it. Okay. It ha also has an ERG on there. What's ERG? Your emergency response guidebook. Okay. Basically it tells you all your hazmat materials, your guides, the right. numbers, what it is. So it's all digital. It's a, the old orange book that we used to carry around yep. is now digitalized. Yep, but we still carry the book, okay. the most recent um, updated book. Okay. So. Um, also, we have our uh, hand lights and then we have our thermal imaging camera. Gotcha. So, what are the two pedals on the floor? So, these pedals here, the one on the right is your, for your cue siren and the one on the left is for your air horn. Okay, and the rope is? So, the rope, we like, again, we like tradition around here, goes to our bell. Goes right to the bell. Yep. Nice, simple, easy way to do that. Yep. So, the cool thing is, is your captain or your chief or whoever's mm -hmm. sitting on this side can concentrate on you know getting people out of the way where the driver can concentrate on driving. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then up front here. Yep, so right on the front, you have your 100 foot pre-connect engine three. Okay. This is most. This is our line that we're pulling for any car fire, such. And that's we, a combination nozzle. Yep, we have our combination nozzle on here. We have a pony line of five inch right in the front. And then we also have additional 50 feet lengths okay. in case we gotta make this. 200. Right, right. And one of the things that one of my fans has said, mm -hmm. a truck's not a truck until it has the road array on yeah. it. So. <laughs> yep, all of our trucks have road arrays on it. Uh, so. You got a federal queue up front, yep. you got regular sirens. Man, this is awesome. I noticed up top, mm -hmm. you guys have not switched over to LED lighting. No, we still we still do um, our rotator lights. Again, we stick with tradition around here. Right. So we keep the rotators going. Man, this is a very beautiful truck. Jason, thank you so much for bringing us around. Thank you. So once again, this was what year? 2006. 2006 Seagray, right? Yep, correct. All right. Thank you for watching this episode of Station Rigs. Before we end, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification, and keep hitting those like buttons. It really helps us out. If you're ever in the area of Lebanon in New Jersey, come by, take a look at it. We'd be happy to take you around. We'll see you again next week. We are in the borough of Lebanon. This is Lebanon, uh, nope. I should have just stopped there. Just oh, like that. Mounted. Okay, so everything on the inside is nice and held in there. It's not gonna fall on top of you. Yep. I was nervous that it was gonna fall. Why don't we redo that? Yeah. <laughs>